What's up, YouTube? It is your boy, JB, back once again with another review for Ready to Love. This is season four, The Reunion, part one. This reunion, I was just sitting here shocked. Not really. Not really shocked, shocked, but I was like, oh, this is interesting. But before we get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any of the other videos on the channel, and you're not subscribed to it, stop doing me like AJ. Stop doing me like Kyra. Stop doing me like these people. Stop taking me out, you guys, and playing me at the end of it. Like, stop playing me. Hit that subscribe button, you guys. And let's, with, um, without further ado, let's go ahead and just get into this review. This person is way too close to my damn car. All right, you guys, let's talk about it. All right, you guys, now, I'm, I'm going to put this before um the segment y'all won't even know how y'all won't even know that i this is out of place i'm telling y'all that this is out of place so let's talk about let's let's have a little um 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 a little one-on-one -on -one, a little housekeeping if you will on, on this channel now if you guys have been around my channel for any length of time if you've been around my channel for at least a year or two or even three years because i've been on youtube for three years now if you've been around my channel for any length of time you guys know me by now to know that anything that I say on this channel is not to be taken lightly. You guys know that I come on here like Misha says on her channel. She gives lighthearted reviews. That's what I'm doing. I'm just giving y'all lighthearted reviews with a little bit of humor in mixed in. I don't say anything on this channel to hurt anybody. I don't say the channel, anything on the channel to demean people. I don't do that. I just come on here and get, speak my speech shout out to my friend Misha I speak my speech and I go on about my business I say I come on here I created this channel it says JB says what for a reason because it's supposed to, it's just to be like JB said what you know stuff like that so I come on here have fun you know do my do my thing and dip out I don't know these people I don't know anybody on these shows personally and if you guys even follow me on social media the same shit I say on these on these videos are some of some of the times I say my exact tweets to you guys. So someone got in my comment section on my last Ready to Love review and they felt some type of way about me calling Jason baby teeth. And they said, have you looked in the mirror, um, baby teeth? Have you looked in the mirror? Yes, bitch. I look in the mirror every fucking day is what I do. But what you won't do is come on my channel and try to be disrespectful to me. Like, that's my whole thing, you guys. Don't come on my channel being disrespectful to me or anybody in the family. We don't respect each other. If we don't agree, if we have a difference of opinion, let's have a difference of opinion. But what we're not going to do is come over here and disrespect anybody. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with my teeth, to keep it real with you. If there is anything wrong with my teeth, if, if and my, it's right here, my enamel is chipped. And once I, you know, get the money, which I actually have the money, I'm just, I don't, you know, I have the money. But once I'm ready to go get my teeth, my enamel fixed on my teeth, I will get it done. My teeth are perfect. Perfect. I have perfect. I ain't never had an issue with my teeth a day in my life. So yeah, besides the fact that I used to have a gap. But suffice it to say, when we come on this channel, let's have fun, you guys. We don't have like we can like I, like you can say y'all can say what y'all want to say. Let's have fun. Like plenty of people have made you know y'all make some y'all make y'all little jokes in the comment section, and I laugh at y'all because y'all I I know y'all coming from a good a, a good I know some y'all are coming from just a, a funny place. Like when we talk about some of the other shows, y'all leave y'all. I, I I love when y'all you know leave y'all little comments where y'all you know y'all be shady too. Not toward me, but y'all you know y'all have y'all little moments where y'all say stuff that I be like, <laughs> I die laughing, but like I cannot with y'all. Y'all are y'all are a mess, but I love y'all. But yeah, like I said, what we are not gonna do is we are not gonna come on this channel and disrespect anybody, me or anybody in the comment section, because guess what will happen? You will. Get that ass B L O C K E D 1000%. I will block you, like, like, um, Keisha says over there on Color Me Pink. The block is hot, like, baby, the block is hot. Test me if you want to, but let's get into um, so now we can talk about Ready to Love. All right, you guys, so the reunion, we um, the, the fashions, the fashions are gaudy and country as I don't know what. I don't know what that is that Amber has on on her show over here. It's horrendous. Amber looks a mess. Amber looks a tacky mess. 
Renisha looks like the Emerald Road, you know, Emerald Road, her green, not Renisha, Kyra, eh, no, don't like it, Alexis, it looks like a, it looks like a curtain, I'm gonna be honest with you, it looks like a curtain, her hair looks better, I, I'm pretty positive Alexis watched everybody who reviews this show and was like, you know what? I am not going to let these people re who review these shows roast me. So her hair looked nice. But everybody, I mean, like I said, the fashions were gaudy as gaudy and country. Even Chris, he looked a hot mess. I was like, girl, what the hell does Chris have on? What swap meet did y'all people, what swap meet did y'all go to and buy these terrible reunion looks? Chrysanthemum, Chrysanthemum, her makeup still looks a mess too. Her makeup still looks ghostly, but her hair looked better. But her makeup was go her makeup was still ghostly. She looked like Cher with that makeup. It, it just looked very ghostly. Um. So then we, you know, we start we start up talking about Chris, right? So they show us, you know, some, you know, they show us when Chris first came. They show us some never seen never seen footage from Chris, and it felt like from that what they showed us in that never before seen stuff. It seemed like all the ladies were gravitating toward Chris, but then as the season progressed, not so much. And, you know, Chris was thankful that um, Tommy brought him back. Someone's reverse. I'm looking at this person in front of me. They just parked and they're reversing. They were getting a little too close because I was about to blow. Um, Honestly, from what I saw with Chris... And like I said, I didn't watch last season, so I don't know how Chris played last season. But from what I saw, Chris played the exact same game. I think the only difference between this season and last season, from what you guys told me, Naya did not like the fact when Chris wanted to split the bills. But Amber, we all know how Amber felt. I think that was what it was. I think Amber and Chris, Amber and Chris kind of reciprocated feelings. Uh, and I use air quotes loosely. I feel like they reciprocated feelings for each other. So then, you know, they talk about Amber and Chris, right? So they ask Chris, you know, about him, you know, him picking Amber. And he says he knew Amber. He felt a connection with Amber after, you know, the brunch. And Tommy was like, that was a second date. That was day two. He was like, yep, it was. So, yeah, like I said, Chris played the same game that he played in season three. Didn't watch it. And Amber says that, you know, when it came to her and Chris, she just felt that they had a genuine connection. And she and Chris, at this point, they're still talking to each other. They're still dating. So that's good. Um, so let's move on, you guys. So then we move over to Kyra, right? So Tommy brings up the fact of all the guys at that one, um, you know, deliberation where all the men said that if they were to leave that process that day, they would have left for Kyra, right? So Tommy asked Kyra, how does she feel about that? And Kyra said that she felt as if she was a target. Now, only way you could have, like, you would have been a target if the women could eliminate each other. Like, I don't know how she felt like she was a target. That part didn't make any sense to me, her being a target. But I got what, she, I did understand what she was saying when she later explained things. But the whole target thing, it didn't resonate with me. Because you would be a target for the women if the women could then vote you off but i know I, I, like i said i know what kyra meant kyra was saying now this is one thing kyra was talking about that you know she felt that that was also part of the downfall of she and jason which that one i disagree with do i believe that that was the downfall of she and jason absolutely not because even in that deliberation jason still said at that point that if he were to leave the process he was leaving with Kyra, so that wasn't the that wasn't what was the nail in the in the coffin for um, him and Kyra. It was the fact that Kyra was indecisive. That's what I think the final nail was. But also in the same breath, Jason was indecisive. Like let's not let's not forget that that let's not put it all on Kyra. Jason was just as indecisive as Kyra was. The difference between Jason and Kyra is. Jason made a decision between Kyra and Liz. Kyra never made her decision. So she also said that she felt like the ladies were questioning her motives. More specifically, Alexis. Which that is true. So, um... Alexis says something 
that I've been saying about this whole, most of these people on this cast, Alexis said that, yes, she did question Kyra's motives because they heard that Kyra was just there trying to make it to the end of the show, which I think a lot of people in this cast was really trying to make it to the end of the show. Um, AJ was trying to make it to the end. Kyra was trying to make it to the end. Joel was trying to make it to the end. Um, for me, I think the only people who were genuine about this process would be um, Bernicia and and Liz. I'm still on the fence about Jason. Oh, whoa, 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 y'all! For, I forgot to mention this. Oh, let's pause right here real quick. Let us pause because I got something to say. So, um, actually, no, we're gonna wrap. We're gonna wrap, so yeah, um. Yeah, I'm going to mention something, so I'm going to have to edit this differently. Remember that. All right. So, um, come on. So, yeah, I was like, come on, Alexis. Come on, Alexis. Like I said, I just feel like people were doing this shit just to get to the end of the show. So, they take a break. So, behind the scenes, we find out a little bit more that Ron was actually the one who was starting all the shit with the cast. Um, So, Kyra says that prior to the show, Ron wanted to date her, but she didn't want to date him. So I guess Ron got in his feelings. So Ron gonna start going around and talking shit. We gonna talk about Ron in a little bit. But let's move on, you guys. All right, you guys. So we talked to Khalil and we talked to Christian. Child, I honestly got forgot about Khalil and Christian. I literally forgot about those two. So um, I'm gonna be honest. I wasn't really listening to what they were talking about. I know Khalil said that you know when it came to him the first night he could have dressed better. Um, Christian said he could have opened up more. Christian actually. Christian was the one person that I did like in that first episode. Now, I don't think that the people gave him a, a fair shot. I really don't. So then we find out that they're both talking to members of the cast, people on the cast. So Khalil is dating Ida, which Ida is still a little kooky to me. Just going to keep it real with you. But she was like, you know, damn, I didn't think we were going public. Now, Khalil kept putting his foot in his mouth every time he said something. I'm like, Khalil. You are putting your foot in your mouth, and I see why you single. I like I see why you single. Christian said him and Andrea, 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 whatever her name is. I don't, I don't know how that's pronounced. They talking. I'm like really. And they showed that clip of them when they were in the first episode, and they were like, okay. But they're date, they're talking to each other, and he asked her on a date, and she said, yes, I'll go on a date with you. So that's what that's it with those two. Well, that's it with those four. Um, my girl trusted she's not able to, she wasn't able to come to the reunion because she tested positive for COVID, so she has to quarantine for 14 days. When did they film this reunion? When the hell did they film the reunion? That is a question I would love to know. So then we move over to Ron's old disrespectful ass. Ron is a disrespectful ass nigga. And I have a problem with nephew Tommy. And I'm going to tell you guys the reason why I have a problem with nephew Tommy. So, nephew Tommy, when he met up with the guys in the gentleman's lounge, after that elimination, he never discussed the situation with Ron and Alexis. And that was my whole problem. Ron was hella disrespectful to Alexis. Now, you guys, like I said, I make my jokes about Alexis. That doesn't mean that I, dis- I dislike the woman. It's just, I, I, it's just that, you know, the material that she gives. Like, her, it's really the name Fly. So, I, w- I just loved messing with her about Fly. And she's not Fly. But I would never go as far as to disrespect someone the way that Ron did, right? So, Tommy's now calling that out at the reunion. I'm like, it's a little bit too late for me. I would have preferred you to call it out when it happened. But, you know, you know, um, better late than never, right? Is what Riley says. Better late than never. Is what are easy. So, Tommy wants for, um, you know him to apologize to Alexis, right? In the midst of this apology, he says he can and he he can he can take accountability for it. But actually you can't take accountability for it. Because if you can take account if you want to take account accountability looks like you know what Alexis looking back on that hindsight, you know, looking back on that, I was wrong for what I said. I should never have disrespected you in that way. That was you know that's not a good look on me. That's not who I want to be portrayed as. So for that, I apologize. That is taking accountability. What you did is you deflected. So you want to say, well, I can take accountability for it, but 
Alexis was taking jabs at me. Alexis was like, I didn't take no jabs at you. And from what we saw, she didn't take a jab at him. Could it be, you know, could editing have gotten in the way? Quite possibly, but I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. I believe Ron's ego was bruised that he was getting sent home. I think that's what the issue is. Ron's ego was bruised, right? So Ron, he played games because he was talking about the fact that Alexis was choosing AJ. That's why he said that that whole smart, co- oh, I thought you were smarter than that comment. That, you know, she, so Ron's whole thing is that he, could, I guess he could see that AJ was playing her, which we all, which we all can see that AJ was playing her for a fiddle. Whenever it came down to an elimination week where the women sent the men home, AJ would use a manipulation tactic by kissing her and doing stuff like that. But I wouldn't attack the woman's, I wouldn't attack Alexis' intelligence like that. I really wouldn't. And I haven't, I, I don't think I ever, I don't think I, I, you guys let me know, did I ever attack Alexis' intelligence? No, I didn't. I just, I, what, what it was with me, I think I know what I said when it came to Alexis and AJ. I don't know how come Alexis didn't see that. That's what I said. Because I have to think about it, you guys. I really have to think about it. That's what I've said about Alexis. I don't understand how Alexis didn't see that AJ was manipulating. That's what it was. And that's what bothered me. I don't know how Alexis didn't see that. Because the week that the men was in a woman home, AJ never gave Alexis the time of day. But anytime the women were sending a man home, AJ would put on a charm and, you know, play up to Alexis so that way, you know, she could, she would, uh, if she was a deciding vote, he would stay. And I just didn't understand how Alexis did not see that manipulation tactic because it was literally right there in your, in your face. So I didn't understand how she didn't see that. But to go as far as, you know, question her intelligence, I wouldn't do that. I just don't know how she didn't see it because that was really obvious. That was obvious to me just watching the show, not even looking at the edit. Forget the edit. You could see it. Because, like, remember in the first episode, he was in the one of, well, what episode was that? Where they were talking about sex. And she really wasn't, like, she wasn't overtly sexual, but she was sexual. But then you have the likes of Stacy, who was sexual. You know what? Well, we ain't gonna get into that again. But you guys know how I felt about it. So then we also find out deeper that Ron was playing games, right? So you guys remember, Ron said that Chris was his his number one. But then Ron says, oh no, I said that Chris was in my top. Okay, tomatoes, tomatoes. Like apples and oranges. If it's, well, tomatoes, tomatoes. But, um, you know, so Alexis said that Chris met Ron's mother. And I was with Alexis. Like, that is really deep. If you, if you, if you had this woman meet your family, you have a much deeper connection with her than you do with me. And I was like, exactly. Like, the hell? So then we also move over to the fact about Ron talking about he went out on a date with Amber. So he said that, you know, me and Amber, we went on many dates with each other. Amber's like, we did not go on many dates. Okay, we went on a couple of dates with each other. We did not go on a couple of dates with each other. Okay, we went on one date with each other. I'm like, wait a minute. And even Kyra says, so, damn. You went from a couple of dates to one date? So, Ron was playing games. And like I said a few minutes ago, I think with Ron, it was a whole ego thing. Ron's ego was bruised when the lady sent him home. When he figured out that, when he figured out that Alexis was going to send him home, Ron's ego got bruised and that was the thing about ron so when his ego got bruised ron was like you know what i'm finna burn all the shit down at this point so i'm finna tell alexis i went out with amber i kissed amber and and ron was just playing ron was playing games and now he wants to play the victim because he's backstage telling um telling uh um um baby teeth aka jason that alexis cheated on him i'm like dude it's a dating show it's a dating game do you not know what the like do you not know what the actual definition of dating means? dating means i'm dating you i could be dating this person i could be dating that person i could be dating this person dating not sleeping with 
not having sex with, dating, going out on a date, me and you, we go to a movie, we go to dinner after the movie, we talk, we go, I go home, you go home, you don't come home with me, that is dating, like I said, Ron, Ron's ego was bruised, that's literally what that shit was, his ego was bruised, but let's move on, you guys, all right, you guys, next up, um, this is gonna be quick, we talked about the friendships, right, the men and their vulnerability, I didn't give a shit about that, um, I really didn't care, then we talked about Stacey and Chrysanthemum, um, so Chris and um, Stacy still can't see what the guys were talking about. Stacy wants to say it's a double standard, right? I got what she was saying, but technically it's not a double standard. I don't, I don't think it's a double standard. It could be. You guys can let me know in the comment section. Do you guys think it's a, just a double standard? I think the issue with the guys were they felt that with Stacy and Chris that they were a package deal. And even in the one episode when it came down to Ron, right? Stacy and Chris were um, in their feelings about, you know, who was in whose top and who wasn't in whose top. I remember that episode distinctly when they had that issue about who was in whose top and who wasn't. That was the issue. The men never really had that issue about who was in whose top and who wasn't in whose top. Not that I can think of. But Chris and Stacy, they both dating people. It is what it is. They, you know, it is what it is. I don't really care. Um, so then let's move on over. And I think we're going to start to wrap the episode. Yeah, we are. So I'm starting to wrap the episode up. So then we move over to Alexis and to Kyra and to AJ, right? So for Alexis, Alexis said that things changed for her with AJ when AJ told her that he was in pursuit of her. And I can understand what she means by that. Like if someone says that, oh, you know, I'm in pursuit of you. That means, okay, you might like Kyra, but you like me as well. And if you're pursuing me, that means, to me, if you're saying you're in pursuit of someone, that means, hey, I really like you. I want to see where this goes. I want to I want to pursue this. Um, But like I said before, when it comes to AJ, AJ literally was just playing a game with Alexis. AJ much like Kyra, just wanted to make it to the end of the show. So, AJ brings up the fact that Alexis was into Ron, and I was like, huh? Like, I don't understand that when he said she was into Ron. And even Tommy said, but by the time you made your decision to send Alexis home, Ron was not even in the picture no more. I was like, exactly. So, what the hell does that have to do with anything? So, Ron is in the background saying that he felt like um, AJ was playing Alexis, right? And, you know, Tommy put a break on that for just a little bit, I think, right? Did he? No, he didn't. He wanted to, he wanted to go, he wanted to clarify what he meant. So, Ron says that they were all at his house, right? And, you know, Alexis was getting ready to walk to her car. And AJ came up to Alexis and said, you know, you and I... We haven't really spent any, any time with each other. So Alexis stayed behind, right? She went back up to a room or she went to a room and two hours had passed. And Ron went up to Alexis and said, I don't think he's coming back. You know what? I really do feel bad for, you know, listening to that conversation. I really do feel bad for Alexis. Like, I really do feel bad for Alexis because AJ literally played her. Like, that's fucked up, man. AJ literally played with Alexis's feelings. And that's one thing I don't like. I get that this is a game. I get this is like a, a, a reality dating game show. But damn, man. That's someone's feelings. Like, that's one thing I will never do. I will never, ever, ever play with the person's feelings, play with the person's, you know, heart. I won't do that. And that's exactly what AJ did to her. Like, he played with her. She let her guard down. She was she let her guard down around him. And she ultimately got played by um, AJ. Like, that's fucked up, man. Like, that is really jacked up. You sat there and told that woman that you two hadn't even spent any time with each other. So she stayed behind thinking that you two were going to have a conversation with one another. And two hours had passed. And you ghosted her. 
You ghosted her. Damn. So then we flip it, right? So then we talk about um, Kyra and AJ, right? Honestly, with AJ and Kyra, I think both AJ and Kyra are playing games. I think AJ, like I said before, I believe that a lot of these people came on this show with the intent just to make it to the end of the show and say that, hey, I made it to the end of the show. And I also feel like they got a bigger stipend for making it to the end, right? So we find out with AJ and Kyra that even after the show wrapped, they continue to date each other. They continue to talk to each other, right? So Kyra said that she had a plan, a trip planned so that she could go out of the country for about two weeks, right? So she went on her trip, and when she came back, Alexis texted her, and Alexis told her that um, she and AJ had went out on a date, right? So Alexis says, yes, we did go out on a date. She says, you know, I, I, I on my birthday, I DM'd AJ, and I asked AJ, you know, everything that happened between us on the show, was it real? And AJ said, yes, it was real. So then he says, well, you know, how about we got to go out on your birthday? And they went out on a date for her birthday, which it is jacked up. Now, was he and Kyra in a relationship? No. Now, here's the other thing that I forgot to mention, and, and I'm actually done with my notes. So here's the other thing that I literally forgot to mention. So Tommy asked AJ, why did you pick Alexis, but then you flipped it and picked Kyra? So he says, well, you know, it's something that you said. Like, you know your girl when she walks in a room. Like, she's the only one that you can think about. I'm like, AJ, you are literally still playing the game. The show is over. The, 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 show, the, the show is over at this point. Why are we playing games? Like, I, I really wish that these people would just be honest and say, I wanted to make it to the end, and I feel like I can make it to the end with Kyra. <laughs> like, like I said a few minutes ago, I, I really feel bad for, I really feel bad for Alexis. Like, if I, Alexis, if I come down to Houston, baby girl, you know, me and you, we can hang out. I really, I would, I would, I would actually hang out with these people on the show. Like, if I'm, I come to Houston quite often, like, I would actually hang out with some of these people. Like, I could tell you guys, people that I think I would hang out with on this show. Alexis, I feel like I would have a good time with Alexis, have a, a good fun time with her, have a fun time with, um, what's my girl, Tressa. I feel like I would have a fun time with, actually, that's it. Actually, that's really it. But yeah, you know, um, I really do feel bad for her. Like, I really felt, in this, in this reunion, I felt bad for Alexis. Like, literally felt bad for her. But you guys, that is the review. I'm not trying to go be long-winded, but let me let me know what you guys thought about the reunion. And we will discuss it in the comment section below. Be respectful, please, you guys. So with that being said, um, I'm off. Stay safe, you guys. Take care of yourselves and wash your hands. Wear your mask and socially distance. If you don't wear a mask, still be safe. Be blessed. And I will see you guys later. And I hope you guys have a great 4th of July if you guys are celebrating it. I don't celebrate the 4th of July. I celebrate Juneteenth. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. I'll see you guys for Love and Hip Hop on Monday or Tuesday, whichever one. See you guys later. Bye.